Welcome to my third video in the extensive playthrough series about Orbit 3 by Joranalog Audio Design. Orbit 3 is a double scroll chaos oscillator and it can be used as a VCO or pitched noise generator at audio rates or you can use it as a modulation source at LFO rates when you switch it to its low setting. I've been using Orbit 3 for this all the time, because the 6 Chaos outputs together with the EP output provide plenty of sources to modulate other modules. And because of the chaotic nature of Orbit 3, these outputs generate ever-changing signals that are related to each other but never the same. In this video we'll explore this low mode and I'll try to demonstrate how it reacts to control voltages as well as showing you how you can use Orbit 3 to create interesting rhythms and modulation for your system. If you want to know in detail what all the knobs, switches, inputs and outputs do, I suggest to watch the first or second video in this series. But I'll briefly explain the features on the front panel before diving into some patch examples. I also want to thank Joranalog Audio Design for sponsoring this video. So let's have another look at the front panel of Orbit 3. First of all, there is this switch switching between audio rate and low mode. I'll have this switch in the low position for the entire video. The signal that Orbit 3 generates comes out of the six jacks on the bottom here. They are labeled plus X, plus Y, plus Z minus x, minus y, and minus z. These outputs are 60 degrees out of phase, and the bottom ones are the inverted versions of the top ones. Let me connect the plus y output to my scope. You can see it as the top trace. The bottom trace on zero scope is the EP output. This one here. I'm sure by now you already know that Orbit 3 is a double scroll chaos oscillator which uses a system called the Strange Attractor and in essence the X, Y and Z chaos outputs are the projection of a particle orbiting two equilibrium points in 3D. Now the EP output sends out 5 volts whenever the particle is orbiting the positive equilibrium point. Now before I patch the EP output into generate Let's hear what's going on right now. This green cable is just a signal coming from the X output that's routed through the scope. I will patch it in the exponential frequency modulation input on generate 3. Let's turn it up a little bit. I already connected this pink cable to the linear FM input on Orbit 3. Let me connect it to the EP output through the scope. Let me increase the frequency a little bit. You do this with the frequency knob. Turning the frequency knob to the right increases the speed of the orbiting particle, so it also increases the speed of the oscillations coming out of the chaos outputs. It also increases the speed in which the particle switches over from orbiting one equilibrium point to the other. So it's really easy to make this kind of annoying siren sound. Let me change the pitch a little bit. The bottom two knobs are offsets for the equilibrium points. With the left one, you increase the negative offset of the negative equilibrium point, and with the positive knob, you increase the offset of the positive equilibrium point. You can modulate these parameters. 
the according inputs, you can send in a bipolar signal, and the value of the signal coming in is just added to or subtracted from the position of the knobs. I'm sure you noticed that by increasing the offset on the equilibrium points, I also increased the amplitude of the signal coming out of the X chaos output. You'll see when I turn them down again, amplitude decreases. You can modulate the frequency of Orbit 3 by using the frequency modulation input. There's a polarizer for this input too. Orbit 3, when in low mode, and with the frequency modulation polarizer turned completely to the right, is calibrated to about 0.6 volts per octave. Let's bring in the signal from generate again. I haven't explained what the distribution knob does. Turning the distribution knob to the right increases the width of the orbits of the particle around the equilibrium points. This results in oscillations that take longer to max out and cross over to the other equilibrium point. When I increase the speed of the system, you probably hear it better. Let me turn it down. Let me turn it completely up. And just like the controls for the equilibrium points, the distribution has a range going from 0 to 5 volts of offset. You can send in modulation into the distribution modulation input and there is a polarizer for the signal too. The distribution modulation input accepts bipolar signals, but the maximum range of the distribution is still 0 to 5 volts, so sending in a positive modulation signal when the knob for the distribution offset is completely maxed out has no use. There's still this switch we need to talk about. It's the tame and wild switch. Let me turn down the distribution first. Right now we're on the tame setting, but switching over to the wild setting changes the chaotic behavior of the system inside Orbit 3 and it increases the chances of the particle crossing over between the two equilibrium points. You can hear it clearly as this results in a faster gate coming from the EP output. And I think by now you'll see that all these settings interact to change the behavior of the double scroll chaos oscillator that is Orbit 3. Let's try something else right now. We're listening to some noise and let me patch this signal coming from the EP output into a VCA controlling the amplitude of this noise. And let me increase the speed of the system. And as you can see in here, you can use the EP output kind of as a random gate. Let me mute this. You can use this EP output as a trigger for envelopes as well. can use this signal for triggering drums as well. There's also a reset input on Orbit 3. This input makes it possible to get Orbit 3 a little more synchronized 
to the rest of your system. I'm sending in a trigger coming from Pamela's new workout, which is triggering the snare drum at the same time it's resetting Orbit 3. Three loves self patching. Let me try this. As you can see by self-patching Orbit 3, you can really change the shape of the waves coming out and the rhythmic behavior of the EP output. And it really comes down to experimenting with all the different possibilities to find shapes you like and to discover useful connections. I think I covered every function of the front panel. Now let's get into some patch examples. In this patch I'm using Orbit 3 as a clock for my sequencer. The top trace on zero scope is the EP output from Orbit 3 and it's going into the external clock input of Mosquad 2. The CV output of Mosquad 2 is connected to the volt proctive input on Generate 3 and Generate 3 is going through the ripples filter. To give the filters something more to bite on, I'm connecting the triangle output from even VCO to the phase modulation input on generate 3. But just a little tiny bit. Now when I close the filter a little bit, I think it sounds really nice. Maybe a little bit less. Yeah. The plus X output from Orbit 3 is going through the scope. It's the bottom trace. And now I'm connecting it to the frequency modulation input of my filter. Like I said, I'm using the EP output from Orbit 3 as a clock. And right now Orbit 3 is at a stable setting, so the signal coming from the EP output are stable pulses that can be used as a regular clock. And now that I've changed some settings, you can hear that the pulses coming from the EP output are advancing my sequencer in an irregular pattern. Slow this down. Let's get back to the stable setting. And 
the red cable is a slow LFO. I'm connecting it to the frequency modulation input. And you can see how the rate of the pulses changes. Now instead of using the LFO to modulate the frequency of Orbit 3, I'll use the pitch output coming from the sequencer. So right now the EP output of Orbit 3 is advancing my sequencer and whatever notes the sequencer is sending out is modulating the frequency of Orbit 3. So in a way there's some feedback going on. Now let me add some atmosphere to this. Of course I can now change the settings so we are no longer at a stable setting. And I'll increase the random function on my Moskva 2 sequencer, get even more variation. This patch doesn't sound complex, but it kind of is. But the main thing I wanted to show you in this patch is that I'm using the Y output on Orbit 3 to create the pitch sequence for both even VCO and Generate 3. The Y output is going through the scope, it's the top trace, I don't know if you can see it. From there it's going into mix mode, it's an attenuator, and then it's going into the quantizer. You can see the quantized output of my scales quantizer as the bottom trace on the zero scope. As well as sending control voltages to the quantizer for it to quantize, I'm also using one of the chaos outputs to trigger the quantizer. And when you trigger a quantizer, in a way it acts like a sample and hold, but with a quantized output. There's an output of Pamela's new workout, which is a clock divided by 12. It's going into the reset input of Orbit 3. But right now Orbit 3 is still free running, because I have yet to start Pamela's new workout. I have another output of Pamela's new workout, divided by 3, and it's triggering some kind of percussion sound. Let's press start. Thank you. 
as always, everything is going through the Cosmix mixer. But now I have the drive circuit engaged. Let me turn up the drive a little bit, because I really like how it sounds. This is yet another patch where I use Orbit 3 to create pitch sequences for two VCOs. But this time I'm using two separate chaos outputs from Orbit 3 to send into the two inputs on my scales quantizer in dual mode. And the EP output of Orbit 3 is triggering this quantizer. One of the chaos outputs is attenuating the sound coming from braids. Let me add some reverb. This patch seems really complex, but it really isn't. I've patched the odd output of generate 3 back into the phase modulation input, but it's being modulated through VCA by the EP output on orbit 3. I have two of the chaos outputs going into the level inputs for the harmonic generators on generate 3. One chaos output is going to the volt per octave tracking on generate 3. Another one is connected to the volt per octave input on even VCO, which is frequency modulating generate 3, and the same chaos output is triggering the kick drum. I've melted the chaos outputs with stackables, one signal is going into the frequency modulation input, and another one is going into the modulation input for the negative equilibrium point. There's a little bit of stereo delay on the output of generate 3, and the kick drum is going through a spring reverb.
There's not an awful lot going on in this patch. I have the full output of Generate 3, going into a ripples filter, it's going through a VCA for some side chaining, and then straight into the mixer. There's a pitch sequence going into the volt proc of input on Generate 3, which is coming from Moskwa 2. Moskwa 2 is clocked by Pamela's new workout, and I have a separate clock coming from Pamela, which is divided by 4, going into the reset input on Orbit 3. You can see this clock as the bottom trace of Zero Scope. The top trace on Zero Scope is the X output of Orbit 3, which is going into the frequency modulation on my filter. Let me remove this for a moment. Moskwa 2 is triggering an envelope which is controlling the amplitude of the VCA on my ripples filter. I have the minus X output of Orbit 3 going into the linear FM on Generate 3. It's controlling the pitch. Let me show you. But I have the polarizer almost at the center. So there's very little modulation, just a little bit. The EP output from Ore 3 is going into the exponential FM on Generate 3. This is controlling the transposition of the melody. Let me remove it for a moment. I've set up Orbit 3 in such a way that the oscillations on the outputs are sort of in time with the melody. Of course, this is not precise and that's exactly what I want. But by resetting it with Pamela every 4 beats, I kind of force it to be a little more in time. And I mentioned in my previous video, focusing on the audio setting of Orbit 3, that the reset input is kind of ambiguous, in a way that you're not sure if you're going to get a hard reset or a soft reset. It's really dependent on what the chaotic system inside Orbit 3 is doing. Let me add the drums again. Now look what happens when I patch the minus Z output into the frequency modulation input on Orbit 3 itself. And I'm showing you this because at this setting the EP output is constantly giving out a signal of 5 volts. And you can clearly hear this when I remove the signal coming from the EP output on Orbit 3 from the exponential FM input on Generate 3. And the pitch goes down. So sometimes, at some settings, especially when there's reset involved and self-patching, Orbit 3 is stuck in either the negative part of its oscillations or the positive part. And this is important of course when your patch heavily relies on the gate coming from the EP output. Let me change some settings to hear what it does. Bye. 
this patch I have three VCOs going through a separate filter and Orbit 3 is controlling the filter frequencies of these filters. Let me stop my clock there. Here the drums and the harp. So this is Braids in the seesaw mode. It's going through a Bastel Instruments cinnamon and the filter frequency is controlled by the Z output on Orbit 3. The second VCO is Generate 3. It's going through the first Ripples filter and the filter frequency is controlled by the X output on Orbit 3 and that's the top trace on Zeroscope. The third VCO is Even VCO. It's going through the second Ripples filter and I'm using the bandpass output. The filter frequency is controlled by the Y output of Orbit 3. Let me press start on Pamela's new workout. And you see there's a clock going through the scope. It's the bottom trace and this signal is resetting Orbit 3. It's also triggering the kick drum. The noise you hear, I don't know if you can call it a percussion sound, is being triggered by the minus Y output on Orbit 3. And the EP output of Orbit 3 is triggering the snare. Let me add the ARP again. In this patch you can clearly hear that the three outputs X, Y and Z are 60 degrees out of phase. So this is only braids. Let me add generate 3. And then even VCO. Now I'm going to play around with the settings on Orbit 3 a little bit and see what I can come up with. Please remember that the kick drum is the same signal resetting Orbit 3, that the noise sound or percussion is triggered by the minus Y output and that the EP output is triggering the snare sound. You'll also hear that when I turn down the offsets for the equilibrium points, the modulation becomes less in amplitude.
good luck trying this with an LFO. Maybe perhaps with a sequential switch where you feed different envelopes and LFOs through. For me personally, when we're talking about the low mode of Orbit 3, these kind of patches is where the module really shines. I'll end the video here. As I said a few moments ago, Orbit 3 really shines as a modulator for your system. The knobs and the switches on Orbit 3, together with the modulation inputs, provide a really hands-on experience to control the strange attractor that Orbit 3 is based upon. Orbit 3 is extremely well built, as usual, with your analog audio design modules. If you're still curious about what Orbit 3 is all about, I suggest you watch the first video in this series. In that video I explain in great detail what's happening inside Orbit 3. And if you're curious about Orbit 3 as a VCO or noise generator, you can watch the second video where I zoom in a little closer at this functionality of Orbit 3. If there's any questions about Orbit 3, please leave them in the comments and I'll try to address them in a future video. Thanks for watching.